Hi everyone, uh, welcome to, to uh, Drawing Online. So um, here's how the rest of the semester is going to work, or the rest of the nine weeks is going to work. Um, I'm going to either post written work or I'm going to make a video like I did today and um, you're going to have to do it on whatever kind of paper you have. Now I gave you five sheets of drawing paper before we left. Hopefully you took it home. Um, hopefully you still have that. If you don't, then if you have your sketchbook of paper of your own, that's great. If you have computer paper, um, that's the second best. And then third, if all else fails, you can do it on notebook paper. I prefer not on notebook paper, but if that's all you got, that's okay. Um, you know, if you have some art pencils, that'll be great. If you have just a number two pencil, that's fine. If you have mechanical pencils, um, not this project, but the following project um, is probably actually going to be preferred to use a mechanical pencil, but you can use a mechanical pencil anytime as well. So that's just a number two, which is a HB anyway. So, um, so anyway, do what you can do. All right. Um, then after you're complete, then I need you to photograph it. And then I don't want you to email to me. I want you to put it on Google Classroom and upload it and there'll be a spot there. So if you haven't already, uh, got on Google Classroom and hopefully you have and I think most everybody has except a few um, then you just need to upload it there I'm going to be grading it there at, at Google Classroom but I'm also going to be keeping progress books up um, so that's the official uh, grade book so that's where that will be um, it is what we do online um, it is imperative that you stay on top of things as well as making sure that you are uh, checking email checking Google Classroom all the time uh, making sure you're hitting the deadlines so the same kind of deadlines are going to apply actually it's probably going to be a little more stringent uh, where uh, you just need to get things done in a weekly or bi-weekly um, basis so this next project hopefully is kind of fun um, I know it's kind of the same theme but I think you can do some twists um, and that is surrealism um, and I, we may have talked a little bit about it but um, so let's get um, uh, there we are um, so surrealism was happening uh, in the 1920s and a lot of the times and this is not gonna be that long so just stick with me um, a lot of the time uh, art followed science and in this case uh, was one of those cases um, Sigmund Freud came on the scene and he was a psychologist and he was kind of saying that uh, your your whole uh, um, just your whole personality was kind of based upon um, your desires and the, the id and this ego and the super ego um, a lot of it was uh, kind of sexually oriented but um, the main thing I want to concentrate on is it was really analyzing dreams and so um, dreams are kind of a weird thing and so we're going to be talking about surrealism and so you know the root word there is realism so the drawing is realistic it's not abstract but the sur means that something is different about it and here's a nice word that you can use is juxtapose you're going to juxtapose two things that don't normally are related but you're going to make a relationship um, you're going to have some sort of relationship with it. So we're not just throwing things on a piece of paper like we did in second grade and your teacher gave you a magazine to cut out and you made a collage and you really didn't know what you're doing. You threw just totally unrelated things together. Um, we're going to be making uh, a realistic drawing that is not realistic um, by putting seemingly unrelated things and giving them a relationship. So I'll talk to you about that a little bit more. Okay, so just think about your dreams. And I don't want to know your dreams, but just think about your dream. They look realistic. If you're dreaming about your friend or your parents, um, they look like them. But usually there's something going on that's not quite right. Maybe you can't run very fast. I have that kind of a dream. Or falling. Or uh, just something is just a little odd. And so what's happening in your brain is your brain is still working while you're sleeping and it's trying to make sense of all these kind of random thoughts so you have this stream of consciousness all this stuff is working super super fast in your brain that you normally can't think of that fast and then your brain says i have to make some sense of this so he starts they just start kind of putting these 
um, seemingly unrelated events and objects together to make something that makes sense. And in your dream, you'll know that it seems like it makes sense until you wake up and you're thinking, what was I talking about? Um, the, the brain is and the mind is a, is a pretty cool thing and you'll have to talk to Mr. Canfield if you want to get more into psychology. But, um, but one of the, the cool things is that you're dreaming all night long, but typically the only thing that you remember is when you wake up in the middle of the dream. So typically um, the dreams that you remember are the, the ones that you're just barely following asleep and then something wakes you up in the, in the first part of the evening or your alarm clock wakes you up in the in the morning and you're like ah oh, that was that was such a good dream um, but you were actually dreaming all night long unless it's a super super intense uh, dream you're not gonna wake up but a lot of times something wakes you up like your alarm clock and that's when you remember it um, I kind of challenge you, and I'm not going to have you turn this in, but I challenge you to write, have kind of a dream journal and write down those dreams because if you don't, typically um, by the middle of the afternoon, you don't have any idea what you're, what you're dreaming, unless it was maybe that reoccurring nightmare or something that you might have. So um, think about that dream as it looks real, but something about it is not real. Now. Freud was talking right here in the slide, it says wish fulfillment. So you're kind of dreaming about things that you wish would happen. Um, you know, if you've all probably seen a Rorschach test and it's like, okay, what is this? What do you see in this? And so everybody, if we had the class face to face, you would be looking at it and you would say, somebody would say it's a sailboat and somebody else might say it's a you know, butterfly or somebody else. So it's, it's kind of, you're kind of taking something that's not real and then you're you're making it make sense, okay? Um, there was another guy named Andre Breton, and he was more of a writer and an artist, and he did something, um, and he was kind of a poet, and he wrote poems where um, he wrote down exactly what you were thinking. Um, and so a lot of times, um, we kind of, get rational and our brain is going 90 miles an hour but then our brain says hey that doesn't make sense we need to step, take a step back but if you really go into your stream of consciousness we're all pretty OCD I mean not OCD but uh, but ADD and our brains are going all over the place so well, let me give you an example of, uh, of uh, this is a picture of him um, 1920s again um, but here's part of his poem and it you, so it's realistic. You know what the word laughter means or the word island means or, or beautiful, but when they put them all together, they don't seem to make sense. There's For a moment, there's like a, a sentence, but it's not a sentence, okay? Um, so this is continuing on that poem, and it goes on forever, and, or not forever, but uh, for quite a while, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into that. So, <clears throat> If you kind of imagine uh, your brain um, and you really start to think about how you think. So I might be thinking about a tree. And so in, in a normal uh, day, we would we'd do this on a computer and we would just type as fast as we could of whatever we thought. But, but this is kind of an example and it sounds kind of weird, but when I'm thinking about a tree, I'm thinking about a tall tree in my neighbor's tree and my neighbor's tree just got cut down and it, and they made this huge stump and well, my, my son-in-law is the one who cuts down trees, not that tree, but he has this really white truck and it's a, it's a big truck. I had, a, I had a matchbox car and a matchbox car was really white and, but I like white, but sometimes I like blue because I like blue jean blue. And so that's kind of an example of how I interconnect things that are really random but, it's, but my brain is working that fast. My brain is working so much faster that I can't even speak of what I'm actually thinking of. So that's kind of the essence of surrealism. Um, it's, it's real, we're using real things. We're not throwing paint on the canvas and just making blobs. We're drawing realistic things, but we're, we're putting, we're juxtaposing two or more things together that are real and that no, normally go together, but we're making them have some type of relationship, okay? We're not just making a hamburger up in the middle of the sky. We have to have some sort of relationship, okay? So we could make a, 
the hamburger into a turtle because there are similarities, but we could put legs coming out of a hamburger. Okay, that would be surrealism. Let me go on here. Um, another one of the famous guys is, um, and this is uh, this is uh, Man Ray, but one of the most famous guys is Salvador Dali. And Salvador Dali um, is probably the king of surrealism, and he's probably the most known for it. Um, kind of goes into poli uh, politics as well. Most of these surrealists were communists. Um, I don't know if you really, if I if I showed you their work you would say, oh, that's communist or that's fascist, but uh, um, but they were. Um, so they, they're kind of on the outside. At, the, at that point, communism was still a little bit in fashion, especially because the um, in the 1920s, the Russian Revolution had just happened. And so some of the intellectuals and some of the you know, college professors were, were communists. And so it, was, it didn't have a bad connotation as much at this point as it does later on, especially in the 1950s. Um, this is Salvador Dali. This is another artist. Um, this is M.C. Escher, and you can kind of see what it is. It's realistic, so the hands are drawn realistic, uh, the pencil is drawn realistic, but things aren't quite right. That couldn't happen in real life. So that's kind of the essence of surrealism. Um, this is M.C. Escher as well. If you look closely, um, you see that this kind of this joker or whatever is on the outside of the building here, but he's on the inside of the building here, but this corner post goes all the way through. So it couldn't possibly be um, correct. And then it's kind of strange. You've got some sort of weird characters, like it's a prison. Um, let me show you another one. This is pretty famous. Um, it's kind of perpetually walking up or down, but it couldn't really happen. So. It looks realistic. It's not abstract at all, but th this is going to be way complex, more complex than what we can do. But um, there's a Lego version. Um, so here, a, a lobster looks kind of like a telephone handle, and they've put these two together. But clearly, lobsters are not telephone receivers. Those are that was photograph. This is a photograph as well. So. Um, realistic image of this man. Um, he's standing in front of a mirror, but he doesn't have a bowler hat on um, in real life, and he has a face, but so the bowler hat has been um, put in and the face is absent. It's just kind of things that make you go, hmm. Um, the, you know, the horse is part of the scene, but he's not part of the scene. And so even if your parents are liking that 1980s music, uh, the rock band Styx made their album cover kind of on a parody of this, and there's their album cover. And so they even, they even uh, kind of twisted it around even more because if we look here, the, uh, the person and the horse are realistic, and in the album cover, they've got the same silhouette, but then they've even instituted even more things. But it's still realistic. It's not, not blobs of paint. If you're looking into a mirror, you would normally see your reflection, but you're seeing the back of the head. So it's still realistic. Um, this one is called Time Transfixed by Rene Magritte. And I think Rene Magritte did the other ones as well. Um, Time Transfixed, it's kind of, now like what kind of a relationship do we have here? Well, trains come out of tunnels, and but the smoke goes up the chimney. So it's not totally random. It is, but it isn't. It's, um, it, there is a relationship. It's, it, that's kind of an obscure relationship, but the smoke is still going up the stairs. So there's, there, they've, they've put together these two seemingly um, disconnected objects and putting them together. This is probably the most famous one. It's called uh, Persistence of Memory. And it gets parodied a lot. When parody means that uh, people will will take it and change it a little bit. Sometimes they've done it for advertisements. They've had all different kinds of things like wrist watches over that. They've done. I've seen um, Disney characters kind of melting, um, but it's realistic. I mean, it looks like a clock. It looks like bugs. But why are they all together? I mean, it's kind of like that really weird dream that you have that you just can't quite figure out why. And here. 
nobody knows what that is. Is it an eyeball? Is it a nose? Is it some sort of liver? Why, who, know, who knows? Um, but it's called uh, Persistence of Memory, and this is by Salvador Dali. Um, so there's some architecture that's kind of surrealistic. Um, wouldn't really happen in real life. I think these are uh, pretty highly rendered 3D concept models, not real uh, real objects. Because now if you look down here closely, there's a McDonald's sign, and it kind of looks like french fries that are coming out of a McDonald's. I wouldn't want to live in the upstairs or have my office here. It'd look kind of cool, but I think uh, <laughs> you'd be falling against the wall all the time. So those aren't real buildings, but they're more surrealistic buildings. Now here are some drawings. Um, and so here's a little bit more what we're going to be doing in the project. You're going to be taking um, two animals or insects, at least two, um, preferably three, and combining them, or combining one with something mechanical. So here they're taking a, a fly and then uh, adding the, the plug and a, uh, a light bulb. So in all of these, you're gonna be using realistic references. So if you, if you think, hey, I would take an object, I would take a, I mean, I would take a, a, a animal or a bug and think about what other kinds of uh, shapes does that look like? If I just stop thinking about it as being an animal or a bug and I think, what shape does that uh, remind me of? Then I can go find reference. So like the, the, the bottom of this uh, um, mosquito kind of has this bul very bulbous kind of thing where it's sucking out the blood and it gets really big and large. Well, that kind of looks like a, a, a light bulb. And so now you got to do some thinking. I mean, this is, this is a thinking person's game. It's not just throwing it together because you need to have those relationships. I mean, it needs to make sense. If you just threw something else on the back end and it doesn't really resemble the body of a mosquito then it kind of falls through so so this is kind of a, a three different things so you've got a submarine like that that big humpback whale and then you make it kind of peel back like a banana but it still has that relationship they still have similar shapes or similar kinds of things both of them are all in, under the water except for the banana um, so here's where you're taking a mechanical thing as well, just like the last one, um, the rhinoceros, and instead of the horn, well, what does it look like? Well, it kind of looks like a smokestack. And so how can you change this into something more mechanical? Uh, I think this is kind of a cool one. This is not, not really of the project because it's not a living thing, um, but I just put it in there so you could kind of check it out. Um, this is kind of fun. Not really the project, but I'm giving a little bit more idea of the surrealism. So clearly these guys are like praying. Um, they look realistic, and, but they kind of look like fingertips and fingernails, and they've kind of put these together. Um, the thumb kind of looks like a horse. So it takes a little stretch. It takes a little imagination how you're going to do this. Um, some Photoshop artists now have uh, done this as well, and here's couple of things the stripes are coming off and making wings um, this is more what we would be doing um, in pencil and they were doing with photographs and they were melding two photographs together so it's a cat it's not a it's not a rabbit um, but they've got rabbit ears and mix them with a, a hawk or an eagle's face um, a little bit tough but uh you could make some sort of iguana changing into something else. And so you're going to take a little bit of make what makes this really special is is the is the reference um, and just the pose instead of just flopping it on straight on. So you may have to spend a little bit of time finding the right pose for a cat or something like that. Um, this is kind of interesting. This is just fun here. So here's the deal. When you're going to look for reference, another thing is that you want to have juxtaposition. Juxtaposition is difference, it's contrast. So don't combine a, um, a sparrow with a red bird or a, uh, an alligator with a snake because there's two similar. You need to find things that are completely different 
um, and then put them together. So you know, we've got something monstrously big like an elephant with something relatively small as a, as a penguin. Monstrously big land animal and a water fowl. Um, so those are, those are vastly different. So it's going to be way more fun if you if you have something that's totally different. You put a giraffe's neck on on a you know, uh, turtle or something. Those are those are definitely contrasting. Okay, so I've got uh, my example here. Now you're not going to do it in color pencil unless you want to. You can't if you have color pencils available. You want to? That's fine. Um, I'm just looking for pencil. Okay, so I've got a rabbit ear. I've got a walrus face. I've got a rabbit's uh, body and the and the whale's tail, and I'm not quite done with it yet. But um, but I want you again to be thinking about all the things that we've already learned, of and like with hair. If you look back at this and look very closely, I mean, I still got the hair going in the direction of uh, the way it would lay. Um, whoops. Um, I'll, I've got some reflection in the eyes. I've got outside of the the eye is a little darker than the inside. Um, I've got these folds. So I expect you to spend some time um, and not just shading in, but I'm expecting you to render it. So you can kind of see, uh, I need to finish the grass and stuff over here, but I want to give you kind of an idea. I'm looking for shadows like, and now both references may not have exactly the same shadow. So you may have to do a little bit of of thinking, okay, well, the shadow's coming from the, uh, oops, the left side or the, or the top here, but my reference, I've got a little different kind of lighting. So um, you need to make those lighting things match. And then just put a little bit of ground on. It just kind of sets them, gives them a little more solidity, um, and just puts them in, into space, okay? So um, that's gonna be due next week. Um, I'm actually going to also here in the in the next day or two. I'm going to introduce the next lesson so that you can kind of be bouncing back and forth because one of this the next one is going to be outside, so you may need to have you know you may need to bounce back and forth. Actually, this is going to be due two weeks, and then this other project is going to be done two weeks. So you kind of need to be working on both of them at the same time because the one is you're going to need to be sitting out in your front yard. And if it's raining, that's not going to work. So you need to pick and choose what days, uh, or you go out and take a picture of it. So, um, so if I'm giving you two weeks for both of these projects, um, I'm expecting them to be pretty good because that's a considerable amount of time. So then, uh, when you're completed, you're going to take a picture of it and then upload it to Google um, Classroom. Okay. So if you have any questions, let me know. Sorry, that was a long talk, but uh, um, hopefully you understand a little bit more about surrealism. It needs to have two seemingly unrelated things juxtaposed to make something that actually makes sense with both of them. So you're having a relationship between those two or three different um, objects. So if you want to do, you know, I wouldn't probably get five or six, but if you wanted to do three, maybe four, um, that'd be fine. Definitely have to have two. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, you can email me. Um, I'm checking email typically. Uh, from seven in the morning till two, two thirty in the afternoon. Um, you know, don't. Uh, you know, I may be on later on in the night, but uh, don't assume that. Okay. All right. Good luck.